Now, let's talk about the topic at hand. It's in regards to the release of the RTX 5060, and there's a lot of controversy surrounding it. Uh, and I think that, in my opinion, there's some really uh, valid controversy or some really valid topics as, as to why um, you could be upset about the release of this video card. And then I think there's some things that are, are kind of just not that valid, maybe grasping at straws uh, a little bit over the top, and I'm going to talk about that. And I think that opinion might be unpopular, but I think when I break it down, it's pretty difficult to argue against my argument. I'm sure there's ways to, but anyways, we'll talk about it. So let me give you guys some background. You can see the videos in the background. NVIDIA's dirty manipulation of, of reviews. I can't review a GPU that doesn't exist. Um, if you thought NVIDIA couldn't get, get more scummy, guess again. And there's been a lot, a lot of videos like this. There's also hardware unboxed. G GeForce RTX 56 review. NVIDIA didn't want you to see this. So this has been a really controversial release. And where it kind of started was the fact that NVIDIA uh, typically, or video card manufacturers, or you know, I don't know what the proper term is, but companies like NVIDIA, AMD, Intel that are making video cards or producing chips for video cards would typically have the release set up to where these hardware reviewers could get the hardware beforehand, get the drivers beforehand, go through and do benchmarks and have a video ready to release either right before the product is released or right as the product is released so that consumers can look at those videos, look at the performance of the product, and then make an educated decision as to whether or not they want to purchase that product. Now, I think that is a valid criticism of the RTX 5060. Um, I think that it, I think that it is consumer it is consumer friendly to be able to review how a product performs before it comes out, and this didn't allow for that, therefore I get the argument. Now, where I think things are going a little too far is people are going past this and they are saying, not only was that an unfair business practice, but this video card is a bad product. Its performance sucks. You'd have to be, you know, people have used all kinds of inflammatory terms saying you'd have to be X, Y, Z to purchase this video card. And if you purchase this card, you're just, you know, you're dumb, you're stupid. And I think that's where things go a little too far, and I'll explain to you why. So first, just, just to give some background here, if you go to the Steam hardware survey, this shows the video cards that the majority of Steam, or the majority of people that are using Steam utilize. And you can see, if you look at all video cards along the top, it's the RTX 4060 mobile for the laptop. The RTX 3060 which for the desktop, the RTX 4060 for desktop. So just desktop video cards here. This is a laptop video card. GTX 1650, 4060 Ti desktop, RTX 3050 desktop, RTX 3060 Ti desktop, RTX 3060 laptop. So the first, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven GPUs are either 60 or 50 series GPUs. You get your first 70 series here, which is already several years old, the RTX 3070. And the percentages of what people have just continue to go down. But the the basically the top 30% of you know individuals, you know, one third of individuals playing Steam games have either a, a 50 or 60 series GPU. It's the most popular. And even when you probably dive into, if I had to guess, let me and NVIDIA is way up on this list, but then you, you jump into AMD, I imagine, you know, AMD RX 6600, that's not a crazy high-end card. The RX 580 nowadays is not a crazy card. The 6700 XT, not a crazy card. That'd probably be somewhere around the 60 series, 70 series. Um, so my point be the point being is that the majority of people with video cards that are playing games on Steam have cards that are sub $350, okay? And when you look at the available options in that price range, you basically only have the RTX 4060, if you can still find one, the new RTX 5060, which just dropped at 299 MSRP. Um, and you have a couple AMD cards I want to send. And if you can even find them, I mean, what's a, what's a 7600 XT going to run you? 350 bucks. So what's, what, what's before that? Um, I honestly don't even know, but basically you've got like the 7600 XT, which is 350 really, I guess if you're trying to find one, you've got the 4060, which probably is going to run you close to that, yeah, 329, so it's running you more than the MSRP for a 2050 if you can even find one of these, 
299 was its msrp um and oh and you've got the intel b580 which is supposed to be 249 dollars but you can see that you basically cannot find them for that price there's one on amazon for 378 uh, i think if you look at um, intel b580 <clears throat> the cheapest one in stock right now on new egg is 299 okay so that's i guess it's the same price so basically you've got the intel b580 the rtx 5060 a 4060 if you can find it and that 7600 xt from amd in that price point and that's basically it okay and out of those choices realistically the one that's probably going to have the best performance across all the games at 1080p maybe even 1440p is going to be that rtx 5060. now if you look at the rtx 5060 they're selling out but there's still one on you new egg that you can get for msrp i haven't looked at other places too there's one you can get above 20 dollars msrp or 20 dollars above msrp um, and my argument for this would be the advantage to this card is it's brand new. It's going to have DLSS 4. Yes, it only has 8 gigabytes of VRAM, but it's going to be GDDR7. It's going to be the only one out of that bundle between the B580, the 6700 XT, and the RTX 4060 that's going to have that faster new uh, memory. Um, and that it is objectively the opposite of what people are saying. It's actually a good value. And the reality is that NVIDIA is going to produce this card in higher numbers and going to sell this card in higher numbers than just about any other video card that they make. People people online in these Build-A-PC subreddits and not watching these YouTube videos, they forget that they are not your typical consumer. They are what you call an enthusiast. So when they look at these cards, they think, I need something better. I'm an enthusiast. I play video games all the time or I enjoy PC hardware. I understand that there's better. I want something better. But when you get beyond this video card and you start looking at higher tiers of video cards beyond the B580, beyond the 4060, the 60, the, the 7600 XT and this 5060, prices go up a lot. Your next tier up from this RTX 5060 is going to be a 5060 Ti. And if we go to lowest price 5060 ti there's an open box 5060 ti which is the 8 gig variant so still 8 gigs of eram and you're already spending a hundred dollars over that msrp of a 5060 to get the ti hundred dollars more and maybe what maybe 20 percent, 15 percent more performance uh, especially with an 8 gig card and if you want to jump up where most people are going to tell you, well, eight gigabytes of, uh, of VRAM is not enough. Eight gigabytes of VRAM is not enough. If you want to jump up to a 16 gigabyte card that's actually in stock, this one's not. This one's still eight gigs. This one's still eight gigs. We're still going here. The price just keeps going up. The cheapest in stock, 16 gigabyte VRAM, 5060 Ti, which again is probably going to be maybe 20% more performance is going to run you 189 more dollars. And for a lot of people with average incomes, that is a lot of extra money. You know, that is, that's, that's a lot of money to spend for 20% more performance. Uh, and then to have to question whether or not you're even going to need it. If this person has a 1080p monitor, a 1080p 120 hertz, 1080p 144 hertz, they play mostly competitive games, maybe the occasional the occasional AAA game where they play some AAA games, but they're willing to turn settings down, they should get the 5060. They should not spend the extra $189 to get this 5060 Ti. I would say to do that, to get that 20% extra, extra performance is actually what's objectively a poor value. But if you go online and you look in these gaming communities and you say, oh, I'm looking to get an RTX 5060 and they're buying into all this controversy surrounding the card, they're going to tell you that that's a trash card, that you should save up money and you should go get a more expensive card. Well, this is the next tier up and it's going to cost you that much more. Let's look at the actual next tier up where you're not just looking at a, a titanium TI card, which is just a, a small iteration above the 5060. What if you want to get a 5070 right now? And let's go to the lowest price. So this would be MSRP for a 5070, 550, which is already $250 above the 5060, and that is out of stock. I actually have this exact card. I was able to get one for MSRP while I was in Oregon, so I didn't pay any sales tax on it. And to me, it was hard to stretch to get one of those. As an enthusiast, it was hard for me to justify spending that extra $250 
knowing that I'm going to get maybe 30% more performance and just a little bit of extra VRAM. I did it, but I'm telling you that that's what most people are going to feel in their mind. So then you look at a 5060 or 5070 you can actually get that's open box. There's a couple of them here and you're spending literally twice as much as a 5060 to get 30%, 35% more performance and four gigabytes more of VRAM. And then what does AMD have to compete against the 5070 to look at as the next tier up as an option? Well, they're gonna have the 9070. And this card is even worse typically. <clears throat> so the MSRP on these is supposed to be, fi be $549. The cheapest 9070 that is actually in stock right now is going for a whopping $700. Again, this is what I would argue is objectively a poor value, not the 5060 that is literally less than twice the it's 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 literally 299 versus 699. That is four hundred dollars less. And so my question to people that are calling the 5060 a bad video card and objectively a poor value is what is the next best, best option for someone that is in that price range that makes an average income or that maybe lives in you know a home with the average household income, which means everybody in the house making $80,000 a year in the United States. What video card do they get if they have an actual budget that they need to adhere to and they cannot afford to jump to a $550 video, dollar video card or to spend an extra $200 to get a, a TI 16 gigabyte 5060 TI. Um, what, what, what is their best option? <clears throat> you you got to keep in mind, most people don't have a micro center near them. I don't have a micro center near me. So just saying go to a micro center or wait for a micro center restock isn't going to work for most people. Trying to catch these online restocks is practically impossible unless you're running some sort of bot or you've got a page viewer and you don't work <laughs> or you work from home maybe. Um, so again, what is what is the, the 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 best option for somebody that that is in that three hundred dollar budget? Are you really going to tell them not to get a fifty sixty? Now, one thing that I've heard people say that they I think they think is a great value, but they don't realize what they're saying is. Don't well, just don't buy a new car. Don't get a 5060. Go get a 4060, a used 4060. You're going to get way more bang for your buck. Go get a used 3060. You go get a used 3060 Ti. Well, let's look at the price of those real quick. Let's look at a RTX 4060 on eBay. And we'll go condition used, okay? And we'll do uh, price and shipping lowest. <clears throat> And we'll make sure that it's buy it now because we're not going to be looking at bids. Well, here's the cheapest RTX 4060 for you. The same price as a 5060's MSRP, 299 309 299 295 300 Okay, so that's not the best value, right? Because you're spending the same MSRP to get a 4060 versus a 5060. Just buy the 5060. All right, so what, let's see. Let's What about a 4060 Ti maybe? Let's do the same thing there. <clears throat> Okay, so here's a 4060 that after shipping is going to cost you, a 4060 Ti, rather, it's going to cost you $335 after shipping. Here's one that's going to cost you 340 here's going to cost you 349 360 but wait a minute, we have the same problem, that 8 gigabytes of VRAM still. And not only that, but reviews have come out for the 5060, and it actually performs on par with the 4060 Ti. So again, you're getting an older card similar or same performance that's not going to have the latest frame generation technology available um, with the same amount of VRAM for more money. Again, objectively a poor value. Now let's look for an Intel B580 and see if we can find one of these used for a good price. Hmm. Same thing, 340, really 350 after, after shipping to get one of these. You saw the one that was on Newegg for 299. Now you could argue that one's a good value because you're getting 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Um, and it's going to have similar performance to a 4060, which will be relatively similar to a 5060. There are reviews coming out showing that the 5060 is outperforming the B580 in several instances. And then I've also seen some uh, games where the B580 is outperforming the 5060 primarily in higher resolution situations, which would make sense because of the higher VRAM. But um, that's one video card. So, so far we've found one video card that you could argue is a better buy if you can get it at 299 which is still $50 above MSRP, 
uh, or maybe not a better buy, but a competitive buy against the 5060, and that's the Intel B580 if you can get one for $300 or less. Okay, one video card so far. Let's look at a, I mean, what else is there? A 3070 Ti. <clears throat> uh, $310. Now this, this might be an objectively decent deal if this 3070 Ti, uh, I mean, I guess I, I, I'd have to look and see at the benchmarks, but the other problem is I don't think you're gonna get, gonna get much better performance. And again, boy, and you also have to question, is this actually a Ti? Cause they put 3078 gigabyte here. Um, but again, you're only getting the eight gigabytes of VRAM. So it doesn't solve your VRAM issue. You're getting slower VRAM. And then you still have to question how much more performance are you really getting for that price? And so, um, you have to excuse me. I don't know a lot of <clears throat> AMD cards right now, but you know, this 7700 XT, the cheapest one's 440. So that's already $140 more. Like, let's look at the 7600 XT. 270 so a little bit cheaper so i mean i guess if the 700 7600 xt is competitive with oh no i guess it's 300 after delivery so i mean to me you look at all this and it go and you go okay realistically what option is better for 299 dollars or the 350 dollars than a rtx 5060 you get a brand new video card with the newest frame generation technology, yes, it only has eight gigabytes of VRAM, but practically everything else you're looking at in comparison does. I guess this has 16 gigs of VRAM, so you could argue that this might do better in high resolutions. Um, <clears throat> but it's it's you know the point is that it's you get you the <laughs> sorry it's it's almost frustrating to me because it seems so disconnected when I see people argue against it, but. The RTX 5060 is actually, regardless of what eco chamber you're living in, objectively the best value video card that you can buy right now. It's the newest with the best performance for the money that you're going to spend. It really is. You know, it's okay to, in my opinion, argue that NVIDIA's practice was scummy and anti-consumer. That is a valid argument. But then to call this video card garbage, when in reality it's probably one of the best values, and mark my words, it will be on this Steam hardware chart before too long. Give it a year. It will be up here amongst these other cards because it will sell like... It'll sell so well. It, you know, it's just a it's just a poor argument. Realistically, the RTX 5060, no matter how you want to spit it, is a good value for the cost that it that it is. And you know, we're still what we're still a couple weeks away from AMD's uh, what is it the 9600 XT release. They've got an 8 gig and 16 gigabyte variants that uses GDDR5 or GDDR6, so slightly slower than the NVIDIA one. Um, but it does have a full PCI 5.0 x16 bandwidth, so that might help a little bit. But I'm I'm guaranteeing you when that card drops, assuming you can get them in our MSRP, the 299 one's going to be competitive with the 5060, but it's going to have the same amount of VRAM and it's going to be slower VRAM, so that's not going to solve your VRAM argument. And then the 16 gigabyte version is going to solve your VRAM argument, but I promise you that it's going to be on par with the the 5060 performance wise and and it's already fifty dollars more for that extra vram and if for some reason it it blows the 5060 out of the water well guess what you're not going to get that card anywhere near msrp at that point and you've got the same problem and you've got the same situation and you've got the same the same conclusion the rtx 5060 actually probably being the best value for your money so i know this is going to be an unpopular opinion but uh if you have a better answer as to what somebody should buy that you can actually find an example of, not just a one-off example that you found on your personal Facebook marketplace, but you can find that most people can follow that are looking at that price range, then go ahead and drop it in the comments.